finale time, my boy. Hey everyone, it's Rose Crystal, and I'm back with the finale of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. So, last time we were given the investigation to search all around the school, and we learned some pretty interesting info, but can we really know everything about Hope Seek Academy? Time to find out. Guess I'm the first one this time. Makoto. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. Where's everyone else? Why don't they hear you? However. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said. Yakuya. The Yakuya? They arrived. One after another. They are all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? What's going on? Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was a deafening sound of fear and suspicion. It was like the first class trial. You called for me and so I ah, appear! I'm late! Oh, I'm on fire! Ah, strong silent master is so wonderful, so cool, so hot my moins are in place! Yes! Now listen to me, this one I believe it to me! My beautiful! With my scissors, sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and go to shift the master of evil. But I thought you could kill me with a little, little boy. <laughs> if it's what master wanted me, a boy, girl, or anything in between, I can handle it. <laughs> Where am I? <sighs> no human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Same here, Kyoko. Is <laughs> everyone here? Ooh, I'm wearing gloomy gust faces, I see. Well, now. Okay, let's begin. Trails, trails, kills! This final class draws me flat in pitch black despair. Fly maximum sorrow. That's fine. You're right, this is the final class trial, and this time it'll be fair. What do you mean this time? Stop all the slander. I'm a fair and good standing, you know? Unbelievable. If there's a fair, Mr. Fair, guy universe contest, I take home the tiara every year. I'm gonna win this game super fair and square. Today, I'm feeling white. I'm gonna make sure, I'll make sure everyone watching at home knows that the fair is my year and the hope. Stop talking. Enough your tedious drivel. Begin the trial already. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. You guys. So don't try and run away. Laughing as loud as ever, Mom could disappear. Whatever. In the name of my family. This will be over in no time. With an exponent confidence, Bianca gives the first of the elevator. One by one, the other followed. <laughs> the only made eye contact, no one said a word. They just disappeared into the elevator. Hey. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However. But you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. However... Well, you can tell us all about it soon, at the class trial. You're right, I'm ready. So... Ready to win, alright? Of course. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. And so will we, let's go! I started making my way toward the opening, step after step toward the gaping mall. I resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated myself there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed my trembling body, and finally, on steady legs, I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, I began to descend. Deeper and deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper still. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper, I fell. I closed my eyes and sight fell away. All sound, too, disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited at the elevator's doors to open them for the last time. What could have been seconds or centuries later? Let the gentle vibration of the elevator come to a stand. I slowly opened my eyes. This is the final trial site? What do you think? Isn't it just the perfect act for deciding a person's fate? Yeah! It's a long way to stage! The always exciting final boss battle! <laughs> and I'm gonna sit on in on this one. I'm gonna sit right here in the base of 16 feet. Trails! Chills! Kills! So, let's begin! So we shall. Let's end this. Alright, do I have anything that I... No, nothing that I have missed. The mastermind stands exposed and must pay for their crimes. Now all that's left is the looming mystery of Hope's Peak Academy itself. Mm -hmm.
Without any further ado, let's begin. Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! That seems easy enough. But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super heart pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will! You better keep your word, teddy bear. And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? <laughs> e even he knows. Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. That can't be good. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! Now, what makes you say that? I'd love to hear it. Come at me. You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! You're all out to get me! I'm sure of it! I have evidence of my own! What a coincidence! I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. W what Wait, hold on! This doesn't make any sense! How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? Show me what No, it's wrong! I have a full of energy today, let's go! It's not just you three. I have evidence too. What? You too? Uh-huh. The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. But that can't be right. Because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. Much in Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. This one too. It's just like I thought. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care. You guys are all in on this together. That's why I'm the only one missing. But you're in my picture. You're the ones trying to trick me. So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude. What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? I think I need to reveal Monica in this trap. This photo is certainly something in common. This connection by one person is shown in the photos. That person is... The one who received the photos. Got it! In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. But when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? Exactly. <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah. I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? You know, there might be more to this than just Monokuma trying to confuse us. There's something else that bothers me about everyone else's pictures. What is it? What's digging at me? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. I'm sure there's nothing unusual about this group photos. 
what is an 80% for one more time? The obvious picture. Hina's picture. Hero's picture. And mine. I'm like strange with all of them. I, mean, I can't quite do it now. Something. Can you just forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? <laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. And what makes you say that? But what are you talking about? There's no way! Yeah! I don't remember ever taking a picture like that, so it's gotta be a fake! I'm sure of it! But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong, I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? The reason I remember this picture isn't because necessarily because it's fake. There might be some other reason. Some terrible reason. I'm believing you an entirely horrifying reason. And that is what we discussed earlier. Amnesia. Now I understand. We have amnesia. Let's say that somehow, we'd all lost our memories. That could explain it, couldn't it? Oh, I get it. So we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo. Makes sense. As if. You expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult-type story? That's the ultimate clairvoyant. Yeah, we all lost our memories? That's just crazy. Only naturally wouldn't believe it. No matter how much they refuse to be absolute truth, they have no choice. You can't move forward until they accept it. And there's no way to prove besides those pictures. And that's the DVD, right? Yup, internet. Interview DVD. You're saying we all got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. So the idea that we all lost our memories... ...is totally stupid, obviously! You're saying we all got spontaneous and since when did this turn into- I promise you, I, ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. Are you sure about that? No, it's wrong! Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not gonna show us something indecent, are you? No, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hope's Peak Academy Headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us, including you. You lie! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The Headmaster did, in fact, interview you. I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? I don't exactly blame them. Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster. What were the interviews about? The Headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And 
How did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever. Or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true! What? Mm -hmm. I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... I really... Pia, you all totally lost your memory at the same time! This is all... making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory law. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out, too. Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. But how could someone just steal our memories? Because the mastermind is a psychopath. How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you. The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. Original motive. You mean the motive you came up with to try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? Why shall we do that? Well, either way, I have to explain every last remaining mystery. So, we're gonna kill you, girl. True mastermind. That's what we need to expose. So, who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. When you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Exactly! You're just making stuff up! There's no way the mastermind is here! The mastermind is probably a million miles away! Are you sure about that? No, it's wrong! There's no question that the mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The mastermind must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case... There also can be no doubt that the Mastermind is one of us. That actually makes sense. What? Why? Because if they've been inside the school the entire time, it only means one of us has put together this insane killing game. Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. I'm sure I told you this already, but this killing game began with 16 participants, all the high school students. And the only people that take a single step in most peaks since the killing game began are those 16 students. So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how do 
how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Yeah, why me? Because! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Okay, at least you have a reason for that. Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? That would be a great plot twist if we were the ones behind it all. Aw, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The Mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Thank you, Biakria. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to, to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? Mukuro's actual cause death must have been the other wounds. I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? The body was covered with other wounds. These are at least several days old. It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, She's already been dead for several days. If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. That is very true. That doesn't make any sense because... Because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... You know... You're wrong. <laughs> she denied me. <laughs> Before I could even say anything! Oh no, I know where this is going. <laughs> Come on, I mean, you think I'm... Toko, please stop. I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me! I'm so sure we're gonna deny it. Why bother saying it in the first place? Exactly! Mukuro was the ultimate soldier. She must have been in a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wins in battle. Not a jam. No, it's wrong. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To uh, be denied so completely... Actually, it's kind of refreshing. Oh, maybe it's because of all of Master's training! <laughs> anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school, in which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. Mukuro's fatal injury. But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, Certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? The identity of the one who attacked me, I can't think of anyone else. The mastermind himself. 
the one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me, but I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. But she's already been dead for several days. Were you not paying attention at all? <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? No, there's no way Mukuro is going to attack me. I didn't see their face. We brought a very obvious friend for you, Okay, comparing to that last attacker. It should be obvious. You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there's another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or the left hand? Maybe the right foot! Wait, 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 or wait. Her... No, that's wrong! Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenri. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. But their hands were exposed. And Kyoko wears gloves, right? Uh-oh! No snappy comeback! Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Well, anyone could say anything. Whoa! Kyoko is removing her gloves. Wait, wait, where, where's the tab thing? Where I can get rid of the window. Uh, auto help, trans. Window off, QP. Okay. Look at that. Look at her hands. It, it's all, it's all scrapped. It's all scarred up. Oh my god. Your hands! Without thinking, I let out a gasp. It's more than just a little burned skin. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. Yoko seemed to savor the words she said, then. But she put her gloves back on. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto. Did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. Alright, I'm gonna save you real quick, but I'm not gonna stop it. We have a lot to go. Yeah, we'll Sorry, my kid. That's a good spot in my throat. Ow. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings! Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure. As long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet! Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown! That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your blue brain! Then she was being stored somewhere? But to hide a body here, to just store it somewhere? There's only one place. I can't think of anything else where the body could have been stored. The bio lab. I got it! Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. The bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a moor, so it's the perfect place to hide a body. And it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. Proof that shows the body is carried from the bio lab to the garden. Something that made us from the bio lab to the garden. And that is the tarp. I got it! What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is the tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says bio lab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. Indeed. This proves that the tarp originally came from the bio lab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the code on it afterwards. Wow, you made everything sound so amazingly consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess! Getting flustered, are we? Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Worked up? Oh, that doesn't sound worked up at all. Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency, one so major it can't be overlooked. Inconsistency in the bio lab? Be about la la la! I can't hear you! La 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 la! Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. Thank you, Kyoko, for saying what I've wanted to say this entire series. Such a child. I need to pull myself together and think. Consistency in the bio Could you be talking about- Hey! By the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? Can you stop interrupting us, please? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. Oh, you just hit a nerve. What? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. 
What do you think has happened to your family? Don't give him Mikado. He's just trying to upset you. Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Yeah, I need to calm down. You haven't let him get to me. I'm just saying that because you know we're getting close to the truth of the bio lab. If I want to shut him up, I need to expose the consistency. And slam him with it. The consistency has to be. That one area of the numbers just don't act up. Alright, let's do this. Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? Bro, bro, bro! Are you sure about this? Bro, bro, bro! I'm not listening! This should be Mind up, let me go! I was, I was really tensing up. I was really, I was clicking the thing to fire the bullet. The consistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights! Get me out! What are you talking about? Oh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the biolab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in, and there were only nine. Why does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. Nine lights doesn't make sense. Number lights that should be on this. Ten lights. I got it! Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. Right, the key to solving this mystery. Sayaka died first. Junko was second. Leon was third. Shahira was fourth. Mondo was fifth. Taka was sixth. Lenny Kumi was seventh. Celeste was eighth. Sakura was ninth. And victim number ten was Mukuro. Hmm. So ten people in all? That's right. Any other number should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're saying a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body, since they actually killed her. And yet, her body was left alone. Then... Whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. And if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's executions, there have apparently been ten deaths. But there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? The reason there are less bodies than murders? Is there more murders than victims? Why is that? I don't think that makes sense. The same person was killed twice. I got it. And added a what ten about victim. It? The same person was killed twice. Huh? Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far. But one of the victims may have been murdered. And then murdered again. Murdered and murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. Still, something like that could easily have happened. No, it is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. 
And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Oh, wait, I just... I figured it out, but... Have you guys figured it out? Because Kyoko's totally delusional! I, I... I just remember who it was. But have you guys figured it out? Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata? Hiro Fujisaki, Manjo Owada, Kiyotaka Ishimaru, Hifumi Yamada, Celestia Lu, whatever, or maybe Sakura Ogami? No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice! Mukuro died from wounds all over Shadow of her body. Wasn't there someone else who suffered the same sort of injury? Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? It was her! No, it's wrong! Junko! Wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Well, don't you remember? Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... And the similarities match? Yes. And those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. Yep. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. It's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims but nine, which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive. She took Yuko's body and made it look like she was the one who died. So Mukuro is still alive. Silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? Mukuro? He lied? No one is still alive as Mukuro? But can you really believe that? No, there's no way. There's no way Mukuro Yukisaba is still alive. The body we found in the garden... It wasn't Mukuro! Then she's still alive? That's right! She made it look like Junko's body was her! So the Mastermind's true identity is... Mukuro! What do you say, Monokuma? Do you give up? Hmm... That's to be true. And that kind of better body found in the garden. Is that really possible? The body we found in the garden... It wasn't Mukuro! It was a thug. No, it's wrong! No, the body we found in the garden was Mukuro. 
That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her record. Right, Kyoko? She was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. If Yukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Oh man, they look like they died, but they're actually still alive. The one person could be. Who are we just talking about besides Yukuro? Juko herself. Here's my answer. Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Very sure. Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. True. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? Now that you mention it, I gently placed my hand on Junko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist, checked for a pulse, like I do in movies and stuff, but she really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say, she was gone. I did check, absolutely, I could see for sure. She was dead. There's no question, Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad! I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad! This case hasn't been decided just yet. You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? Not in the slightest. No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. And we're gonna save again. That's all well and good. But how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? How could Junko have survived? I checked her. She was dead. I'm sure of it. Still, if she were alive somehow, could it be that Junko's not the one who died? It wasn't Junko, but someone else entirely? Maybe she's some sort of trick. He replaced. Choose your place. Now I understand. That would make a lot more sense then. That's it! What if she switched places with someone else? Switched places? That's right! Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that, so maybe the whole idea is wrong. Has to be some way. Maybe they're how to turn like a switch. They switched the beginning. I got it! Two of them, they had switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes! From the moment we first met, if that's when they switch... 
then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Hold on! So, you're saying the Junko we first met... ...was actually Mukuro all along? Then, we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko... ...and we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait! But Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. Yes, that. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. It's very true. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro... The ultimate despair teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back. I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. I'm not so sure about that. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense! Junko's my secret identity? <laughs> As if! Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity? When did I do that? He still refuses to admit it, but he can try to deceive us all he wants. It doesn't matter, because I've already figured it out. He tried to hide Junko's name, not just once, but twice. Prisons are in our latest investigation. And that was at the interview DVD. I got it! While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the headmaster. It wasn't just the monitor. The DVD itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Oopsie, looks like a book. Out of service. What, it just happened to break just now? Now then, when does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? You made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah! If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up! And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter! But that whole power outage thing was just a fluke! Nope. No, it wasn't a fluke. The Mastermind definitely orchestrated that power outage. And that's not the only thing that tried to hide Junko's identity. The Mastermind tried to cover one of the things that I gotta reveal that. Oh! 
wall. This should prove it. Yep. Seriously, I always think I'm so paranoid I'm not gonna hit those. Because they have a switch at right that side. The video wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh. Oh, uh, I noticed it just a little while ago. When we were all comparing the photos we got in all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. Well, what's so unusual about them? Unusual circumstance common in all these pictures? Oh, I see it. The new circumstance is Junko's face. I got it! Junko's face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? It wouldn't be strange if the face is hidden in one picture or two, but all of them? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko, which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind. And the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait! Now hold on! It's over for you. Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything. Right now! Fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. No, it wasn't. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusawa. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue, until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. 
She fabricated the murder to try and friend Kyoko, who proven to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. Oh, wait, what? Aw, oh, dang it, that makes it anticlimactic. Stop it. Uh, let's, uh, move this over. And, uh... Here's exactly what happened! Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. There we go. So she put on a mask and then attacked him. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one in the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. That is quite clever. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder, and the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. Is that... The real Junko and Oshima! That's the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What? Are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? Oh no. <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear. Oh jeez, okay. If you guys want to see part two and the end of this entire game as soon as possible, please give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll get to work recording this right away. So while this video is uploading, I'll be recording part two. So I'll upload those two parts at the same time. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.